वेलकम बैक टू आईटीएसपी टेक्नोलॉजी सो लास्ट वीडियो वी कवर्ड अप टू दिस इन द ऑपरेटर सेशंस वी कवर्ड इंक्रीमेंट एंड डिक्रीमेंट ऑपरेटर्स हाउ वी कैन परफॉर्म इंक्रीमेंट डिक्रीमेंट डोंट वरी आई विल प्रिपेयर अ वन रिवीजन सेशन फॉर ऑल दिस टॉपिक इन अ सिंगल शॉट सिंगल वीडियो and then i will share first i will complete this all the topics so increment and decrement is completed and arithmetic operators are completed string concatenation is completed relational operators also completed and equality operators is completed then is the instance of operators let's see where we completed or not mm -hmm. string concatenation we completed relational operators we completed right and equality operators we completed up to this and instance of operator also we completed let uh, just i want to revise the instance of operator uh, the instance of operator is applied only for the particular object if you want to compare that object this object is belonging to that uh, class then you can use the instance of operator like equality operator you can say suppose you pick you have a class string and you are comparing with that object class then a string is the sub class of object class then this with match with happen right something it's going on so just like this here you can see o instance of x here o is the object reference of x is to so class name or interface name okay then t instance of thread not t instance of thread t is belonging to which class thread class true okay t instance of object true why because thread class is a super class is object it's, it's belonging t instance of runnable it's, it's the interface right this is the implementation here you can see so up to this we completed now your rules some also we discussed where we can use operators and now next topic is today is the bit wise bit wise operators so let's start bit wise operators so take pin there is my okay so now first is in bit wise operator we have and so this and denote this is the bit wise operator okay this and and this one and this one is to different operators in java okay this operator is we can say it's bit wise comparison if both argument are true then only result is true right in this and in this and in this and if sorry in this and if both arguments are true then it will return true if any argument is false if any argument is false then it will return false means 0 1 if 0 means false right 1 means true then will become what is that here you can see 0 1 equals to in the and case is a zero will work we go and one zero means zero then one one then you can say one output is true like true means true one means one is true true and true means true if we any false is there the result will become false then or the same opposite here in the or case if at least one argument is true then result is true here you can see in the or case or case or symbol is this you can use this or if any argument is true then it become true otherwise is false like 1 0 it become 1 0 1 it become 1 is 1 1 means 1 means true then is true then both are are false then it become false okay but here here if any one is false then output is false 
same example here you can see Exod. Okay. Exor, exor also. Exor. Like this. If both are different arguments, then result are true. Both are different in exor case. Like zero, zero means false. False. Zero, one. Both are different. Then it will return true. Right. And one zero means is also true, right? And one one means it is written false. So you can revise these three operators. It's very, very important in the logical programming also. Okay, so and and means if both operators are if both arguments are true, both or not operator, both arguments are true. Then it's become true. If any argument is false, then it's become false. In the or case, if, and if any argument is true, then it's become true. In XOR, if both arguments are different, if both arguments are different, then it's become true. Right? If both arguments are same, then it's become false. It's a bitwise comparison happening inside that okay let's execute these examples i will show you this system dot out dot print and true and false and what is that meaning both argument are true then it's become output is true but both argument are is here one is true second is false means output means false false will get here True or false. If any arguments are true, then output is true. Okay. If both arguments are different, yes, both arguments are in the XOR case. In the XOR case, both arguments are different, then will become true. Let's see. We can apply bitwise operator even or integral type also. Here you can see four and five. And if any one operand using Comparison, comparison, right here. You can see one zero one four is like eight, uh, eight two four one. Like that, it's happening. I think so. We give an uh, one one PPT to you. I think so. Attached to one bit wise here or not? Let me check once. Not zero. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Here you can see eight eight four two one eight four two one eight four two one. Okay, that there we eight four two one in the taxation we have eight four two one. Eight four two one. Now here you can see zero zero one zero zero means eight four two one. Now here you can take a two right and one zero zero and one zero one. One zero one means four one five five. It's a five, it's a four. Right, so when you get that one is one, both are same, then it will go one. Right, so you can see both are same, both are same, both arguments are true, then result will become true means one. If any arguments are in the end case, in this case, this is happening. If in this case, any if false is there then output will become zero so one zero one means eight four two output will become two four 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 how we can write a four like that okay so here also you can see four and or five if in the or case in the or case 
if any one argument are true, then its output is true. If any one argument, this is true, true, and this is false, and this is any one argument. In the XOR case, you can see if any both arguments are different, then output will become true. These are same argument. The output will be equal zero. Here output is one five four. Same output is one. So now I hope clear to you. Okay, this operators and or XOR. It's important double and double equal double or. So now bitwise complement. This is coin C tilde, tilde symbol operators. So we can apply this operator only for integral type, important point. Where we can apply this tilde operator integral, but not for the Boolean type. We cannot apply. If you try to apply, then compiler will give an error. So now let's execute this previous example. For you guys, just we need to run our ID. Make some moment to work perfect. Go ahead. So now, after this, I am explaining this, and only one time I will show the practical to you. So, now in the tilde operation, where we can apply only the integral while byte, short, int, long, double, float, like that. So, true, it's not possible, but here you can check tilde. tilde four right and five its output is become five how it's two's complement of four two's complement is four zero one 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 zero how we can add it add it to one in this then output will become this so minus will outcome sign bit okay this is the picture I have attached to you. You can go through that. You can learn more about this bit. Oh, sorry, about that uh, binary system number. Okay, then you get more clarity about this topic. I have shared this uh, PPT. This is video. And where I will share? Okay. Yes, I am showing to you. It's your purpose here. In this ITSP group, uh, link is there. Mm. Where is link? I think so. Videos in the video last video. This is video is last over Java operators here. You can just click on this FB guru for the notes and you will get the notes. So here you can get the notes, right? So now let's continue this over stage topics. So the next is Comparison, you can see Boolean complement. Boolean complement. This symbol we called as a Boolean complement. Not. We can say also not. So this operator is applicable only for Boolean type, but not for integral type. If you're trying to applicable for that integral, it will not happen. Right? So this will get an error. Here, example. True, not. It has become false. Output will become means just opposite. If you uh, result is true, then you apply this uh, compli complement operator, then output will become false. This is used for that. If you want that any uh, if condition returning are true, then you want false. Then just put this symbol boolean complement with that expression so that the output will become so let's see that uh, example mm. first we learn about uh, increment decrement is done so now just open src com dot operators done open new java class uh, classes, what is that? Uh, today's bitwise, bitwise. Ops. Okay. Ops com dot bitwise, bitwise. Okay. With the main method I want, just 
Now here we are writing our sys out. First, we can true. That's the predefined keywords. If you don't know the keywords, check my first video. Take a and then true. True. Then output will become that's it. Output will become true. If both are true, no? we run a Java application. Output will become true. Then this out and true. True and false. Then output will become what is that false? If any false is there, then output will become with it. This out. Okay. Uh, true and true or true or true not true true or true or true. Okay. Then if any in the or if any here any in this expression true is there, then it will return a true. Okay. Run it and you can see true will get okay. Then as this out true just take a false false or true. If one true is there, then in the or case. True will work, will come. Now XOR, take a XOR, sys out. Okay. And true, true, XOR, cap symbol is there. XOR, true. Then both are same, then output will become false. Right. I have discussed with you. And sys out, both are different. This test not this out. Both arguments are different. Then your output will become true. Your last will is true. Perfect. Okay. Comment this true and false was true type. So now next we use this application in that uh, number systems also. And this out you can check five and five and uh, okay four and five four and where is that and if four and well, will get that that bitwise operation is happening. Four will get we get five four. Okay, this out same four or five. What is that output? Not a true false. It's calculating inside that bitwise like binary system calculation is happening. This out and five four XOR and four XOR five. What will be the output? One will get same output we get, right? Perfect. So now next is we discussed what is that not not operator we discussed, right? No tilde we discussed, right? Tilde. So inside the tilde we cannot apply it with that with that. Let's see tilde operation. We see tilde. Okay. Here you can see we cannot apply tilde operation with that boolean. So if you try to apply tilde with that boolean, not possible. Okay. Okay. If so you want to print a tilde with a, a tilde symbol, true. Not possible getting either. If you tilde getting four, it's possible. Let's see. What is that output we get? No, minus 5 we get, right? It's internally some bitwise operation is happening. That's why it's getting a minus 5. If you get any, yes, out. It's a simple out. 
this out okay and uh, not this tilde two you can see tilde two inside the integral part you can apply minus three we will get you can see here it applied for the, i will show you the one more to you you can if you can observe this if interviewer asks you can guess it okay six then what is that output minus seven in my point of view minus seven is good then you can win 63 what is that output let's see if yeah 64 will get minus 64 will get so i think you observe this if you anyone if any interviewer asks to you this type of nonsense question then we will give to that person take it man throw it to the face that interviewer right so now up to this is completed next is or what is that operator uh not right here we learn tilde not this tilde and here we learn about here to what is that uh, and and or and xor Perfect. we learn three operators then not if this out in the not case what i said to you what i said to you guys in the not case in the not case if you take not within that integral value first point it will get an error let's prove this not for and here you can getting error right what is that error? the operator is not an undefined argument this type okay then error will get errors errors okay today i will uh, commit this code on github and share with that repository links in the video description there you can get it okay don't worry okay so now this is out front of you i will commit this create one repository then i will commit that okay then you can learn also github in the course, course Java. If, if you are learning code Java, you can say I can post the code on GitHub. If you want more about GitHub, then go and check two videos are available on the GitHub. One more, more video I am planning for that. Then that video is for sufficient for the any developers. Developers can easily work with that GitHub. And more content I will uh, provide to you for the GitHub related. Like GitHub action, most my, my CI CD is the most. Uh, favorite topics so let's start okay so here just print not okay for the printing purpose not become like true if you like true then how to do you come to pass the true and apply not then it will become false here you can forget false this is not required if you are confusing confused remove this false will get if you print false then true will get okay just i am just taking one if taking one condition if if anyone passes something like in that the if just pass not true to do okay yes out this out inside if okay else else yes out this out inside else if I as block, what block will execute? Always this block is execute. Always inside. If you pass not, by default value is false, right? Passing directly to no? it's true. Then inside if. Okay. No. Let's see. This is the example to you. So I think it's clear to you guys. Here is 
Okay. Next is so some conclusion is summary is there uh, about this. It is not good. Okay, summary. This is the important. So summary related to and you can give a summary related to and both operands are true. Both operands are true like both in the uh, two arguments in the method both arguments are true then output will become true if any is false then output will become false or applicable for both boolean and integral types right xor same case is happening tilde applicable for integral type only but not for boolean type okay Applicable for only Boolean, but not for integral. Got it. So, XOR, OR, AND, AND. AND is both argument true, then output will become true. Uh, uh, OR, get. if any argument is true, then it will become true. XOR, both arguments are different, then output. So, now, this is the short circuit operator. Very, very important in Java real time. This is we are using. This will be we will use, not that one. Okay. So here these are these are exactly these are ex, these operators are exactly same as normal bitwise operator. Okay, and or except for the difference. Okay, these are no differences as functional wise, but some difference are there. Both arguments should be evaluated always. Here, in this case, both argument in Java, in Java, if we use and this and this and, then Java will evaluate first and second, right? Right. When we use double and, double and or or, only first argument will evaluate, second will optional, not evaluated. They will not. If first is true, then output will become what is that? In the AND case, first is true. Then second is true. Okay. Then output will become true. Relatively performance is low. Why? Because this is evaluating both that. Uh, points like both argument one and two it, it is evaluating that's why it's relatively performance is high relatively performance is high applicable for integral and boolean type applicable only for boolean type not for not but not for any integral type okay x and and y means X should be true and Y should be true. Then output will become true. If I is, X is true perfectly, right? If false is there, then this should be evaluated. Okay. They will check sufficient like. Okay. If this is the false, if first is false in the AND case, then uh, then this is not evaluated in the second part if first we get false in the case of and then second is anything anything like true or false whatever this is not this is not uh, considered second argument evaluation is of optional they is they will not evaluate it they will just skip this part that's why this is uh, relatively performance is high why? Because this is if we are getting false in the first argument, second it's not evaluated, right? Here again, by will be evaluated if and only if x is true. 
x is true, then this is the sense to go with the second. Check if second is true or false. If first is false, what is the requirement to go and check the second? Not a good way. Okay. If y is false, then you want to be evaluated. Okay. You want to be evaluated. If x is true, then only y will be evaluated. If x is true, then go with that y, right? x or y, x or y, y will be evaluated if, what is that? First, you can tell me, what is the functionality of or, or. both are different, Bo no, not both are different. If any, any one argument is true, then output will become true, right? If here, if x is true, what is the requirement to go check a, a second one? Is there any sense to go check second argument? No, just return a true. That's it. That's why this is a relatively performance is high. Okay. If it is false, if it is false, then it's go to check second argument, right? This is the difference. Same points is written here. You can check. So now source circuit operator is completed. Now let's see some example also. We can see that. So x equals to 10, y equals to 15 here. Write one if condition. If it's nothing but x plus plus x. Here is the very, very important. You can observe. And less than 10. Perfect. Here x will become, what is that? Here x. Starting x will become, right? 11, guys. 11 is less than 10. Condition is false. You are, but condition is false, but it, it will still check. Because you get a in the you you put a or operator. Okay. If this is true, then it not required to go here. But it is false. Right? If any one operator is true, then output will be come true. Okay, here by plus plus by is right now is 15. But with the post increment pre-increment is there, that's why it becomes 16. 16 greater than 15. 16 is greater than 15, right? This means condition is true. In the OR case, if any condition is true, then it will go inside this loop, okay? okay. Then I will, be, then uh, X will become 12, right? As you can check by will become this and print that well. Right. And operator and so here you can see 11 by will become 70. Okay. If 12 here will become by will become 16. Here you can see and operator 11, 16 is the y value and 12 is 16 value is there. Okay. So while using a uh, single it this will perform a bitwise operation, right? Bitwise operation it will perform. So let's see that code. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is that bitwise? Uh, and short circuit operators like this. These two short circuit operators. Just check. Int x equals to 10 comma y equals to 15, right? If plus plus x less than 10 or by plus plus by greater than 15, right? Then just increase the value of x. Increase the value of x. Else, okay? Else, inside the else, increase the value of y. And then print x of y. So trace plus y. And at the end, you can print x plus. Right. Let's see what is that value. So as an assumption, value was here you can define. 
12 we get and 16 minus 16 we get not a minus 16 16 we get by value so here what is that happening first it will check x value initially x value become 11 then come inside this loop Okay. First, it will here. You can see x value is ten. Here is ten. Once come inside this if condition, then post pre increment is there. Then x value become eleven. Right. Then check its condition is true. Not condition is false. Then check here. Why? Because in the or if first condition is false, then it will evaluate with the second. Here you can check false x plus plus y by initial value is 15 right then if you initialize this x value become increment the pre increment is there then 16 will value will become 16 then condition is true then condition is true then controller will come here then increase the value of x x value in initial is initial is uh, like 11 then then that value will become 12 then print that value 12 will be printed. Then come out. Then here check. Else y value will become 16. Increment the y value. Okay. Then else will definitely execute. Check time. Nice 16. We'll be by because this is the post increment is there. Here, here not. Cursor is not coming here, guys. Cursor only increasing the value here. 16. Okay. Cursor is not coming here. Okay. I will show you. Close this. Mm, here you can just minus my perform. Run this. Then you know, if any changes is the not. Well, because else is not executing. If only executing. If if you're getting a confusion, right? Else, when if is not executing, then else will execute, right? If and else concept is there. So I think it's clear to you. Okay, if you can perform here post increment, right? Post increment, then 12 will become after that it's increasing valuation, right? So now you can use as much as you can like, okay. So now up to this it's clear. Okay. Now next example is here you can check x equals to what that value is our 10 right x value is right now is 10 okay then x will become 11 11 okay and check is less than 10 no condition false if this is the false if this is the false it is required to check this condition it is any uh, requirement why because this condition is false in the end case, both conditions are true, then it will become true. Then else will return. We'll execute this code here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And we take one S out inside the S out. Just if check one int x value is there. Okay. If plus plus x less than okay, 10 right less than is taking greater than is taking if less than then less than is taking not a greater than okay and take a and what is that value you're taking uh x divided by zero x divided by zero with that okay an output 
Inside if inside if right uh, else this out this out not this out this out here is nothing what about that inside side else right the so, yes run this code so, run it now inside else it will always uh, because this condition is false this condition is false then this condition will not check it, it if this condition is true right now right? condition is true perfectly then this condition will evaluate at time 10 x value will become 11 11 divided by 0 arithmetic exception we will get perfect arithmetic exception we will get so much good i think so much good right so Next, come to the next phase topic type cast operator. Important, type cast important. There are two type casting first is implicit, second one is explicit. So, let's start implicit type casting int x. Implicit means internal type casting is happening, then it's the imp uh, like uh, implicit if you don't know the implicit you learned about the implicit i have shown to you implicit type casting you remember here you can see what is this this is we declare as a in right but what we here do in this lies is last a why because internally it's 297 is value is 97 is there that's why it's not giving error. So this is the implicit type casting. The compiler is responsible to perform this type casting. Implicit type casting, which is compiler will perform. Okay. Whenever we are assigning lower data type value to higher data type variable, then implicit type cast will perform. Like this is our data type. Uh, assigner like byte, sort, int, pair, dub, float, double, long, like that. Okay, so when you assign uh, byte to this, then it's perform implicit. This one is implicit. If you're trying to assign this value to this, then you should perform the explicit. Next, we will do float, double, okay, long, here is long then float double okay so here it is also known as binding or uncasting upcasting binding and upcasting there is a no loss information in this type casting no data loss the following are various possible implicit type casting here byte can type cast to sort sort can type cast to int but sort cannot type cast to byte implicit. Okay. Int can type cast to long, long can type cast to float, float can type cast to double. Right. Care also is here. And multiple uh, uh, multiple uh, matches are there. So byte can type cast to float, double, whatever you want to do. Right. Now, here example you can see. Int. Int x, this is declaration is the character type. So this type casting is happening in 97. A compiler is assigned this value to the 97. Right. To note, compiler convert char to int type automatically by that implicit casting. Right. So example two, double d equals to 10. Right. Double d. Double d is 10. Right then output will become float double d here you can see the double d is possible compiler convert dub int to this is which type this is value is int type 
then compiler will convert to double type automatically by that implicit casting. Got it. Explicit typing, this is the very, very important. This is important. Learn each and every point and listen carefully. The programmer is responsible for this typecasting. What is that explicit typecasting? Explicit typecasting. Casting. Programmer is responsible. Programmer is responsible. Right? Why would I will tell you? You can yes, here. Where is my pen? Okay. Whenever we are assigning bigger data type value to a smaller data type, variable then explicit type casting is required. What is that? If you perform a double data type cast to int, int then type casting is required. So we need to type cast double value to int. So there are many v when may be there may be chance loss of information in this type casting you can see double is this type double and float like point zero word zero something but int is this type int is this type just a like before the point it will assign it like imaginary number it will assign to that this is the real number so only the uh, after that point it's lost the data. So that's why. If the following various possible conversion where the explicit type casting is required. Byte, sort, sort, int, double, float. X to byte. They will get that error. But solve this error, guys. Yeah. X equals to 130, then type cast to byte. X you can type cast this by using this is type casting, explicit type casting is happening like this. Okay. Significant weak kind of thing is there. You can just what is the internal is happening. You can observe this. Okay. Like that. This I will show that example. I'm going to show the example. Explicit type casting. Suppose we have one longer data type. I will show the float. <clears throat> double, we can take double. Double D equals to 10.1 D. By default, it will take a D. Double, okay? By default. Just I want to type cast to int P equals to int i equals to d then it is also not possible you can type cast it to int just type cast this now here it's getting that issue not issue this out just print up i see what is that i look we get we get not arithmetic exception we required wait but we can if getting any exception at this line remaining code will not execute that's why we not execute this just remove this exception here you can do 10 we will get we lost the data type casting is happening it's perfectly but we lost the data maybe some way we have lost the data because some range if you out of range is initialized type casting to the uh, inside a smaller range then this will happen now next is Whenever we are assigning a higher data type value to lower data type. Okay. So, whenever we are assigning higher data type value to lower data type higher data type value to lower data type like according to range according to diagram value the variable explicit type casting the variable explicit type casting the most significant bit will be lost 
what is that significant width is lost okay we have to consider list significant width like example you can three 150 is zero sort cast two into sort and cast two into white then one significant width will lost then output will become this Whenever we are assigning floating point value to integral type, then explicitly type casting the digit after the decimal point will be lost. I showed to that example. We are not required to show that again. Okay, if you assign double to float, then after the th three digit, after the th three digit, uh, float we will not take that value. Only three times four digit it will take. Away. So now next assignment of return. This is important assignment. This we are assigning that value in the last uh, four to five sessions. Like eight session we completed in the course Java. This is that. Uh, assignment uh, like operator and assignment the last sessions so there are three types of assignment operators how many types of three type of assignment so first is simple assignment combined assignment is there one more is there we can here is the single assignment is the simple one just declare that and assign that but uh, consider the assignment like Chained assignment, you can see chain means 20 assigned to B, B assigned to C, C assigned to D, and D assigned to A. Right? We take it with the value is 20. Both value is 20. Why? Because 20 you can assign with that. There is this, there is this, this. So we will get 20 of 20. So B, C, D is there, and you can see B and C, D, and after that A. If you print that A, then value will be more. Okay, here you can chain directly. We can't perform chained assignment directly at that time of declaration. This is the note point. If you chained, if you performing any chained assignment, then you should first declare that variable. After that, you can perform that chain assignment. Perfect. So now next is example two. Here we can't get because we are uh, assigning the chain chain assignments and also we are and also we are doing and also we are just assigning that and uh, declaring also uh, well right. Next is compound assignment. Compound assignment. Okay. Sometime we can mix assignment. Okay. Operator with the some other operators. For two from compound assignment operators. Like example, 10 A. This is the mixed. This is the compound. So we have a three type of operator, three type of assignments. Three type of three type of assignments. So here three. First is simple chained assignment and compound. So simple just you can declare and assign the text. And chained is first you declare like in a B C D like and assign that value A B C D equals to 20 and every value become and compound is mixed like A plus equals to 10 like that mixed is like increasing that value when 30 will become 
a and plus a plus b a value will be a value is 10 right there are some following mixed operators plus equals to minus equals to multiply equals to divide equals to percentile equals to and equals to or equals to x or equals to double shift triple shift equals to double right shift left shift in case of compound assignment operator internally internal type casting will be performed automatically by the compiler similar to increment and decrement operators this one it's why because here is yes, you can see with the two operands if you adding two operators with the arithmetic operation the output will become integer then what you are assigning in that in that byte if you take int then that output will not that error will not get so here byte 10 same plus two plus plus then if you print 11 then value will become 11 byte equals to 10 and b plus equals to 10 b plus equals to 10 means 11 will happen then b byte b plus one byte b plus one means 11 we get same thing is happening like this this line equals to this same thing happening in the chart byte b byte b equals to 10 b equals to b plus 1 b plus 1 means 11 is output at b value and assigned to that b the system dot out dot here we get a byte why because why because we get other possible loss of present found in byte why because b two operands if you performing with the two operands one arithmetic operation then that output will become integer okay it's the bigger output will get conditional operators important So this is statement. The only possible ternary operator in Java, conditional operator. This is also called as conditional operator or like ternary operator. If x equals to, if this condition is true, then this output will become this if this condition is false this out this i am saying around here you can do the explanation if this condition is true then output is this this condition is true the output is this. Like that this is going on. Here. You can see. 10 is greater than 20. Condition is. What is that? False. Execute this. Check this one also. Condition is false. If the condition is false, then output will this. Okay, here you can check ternary operator. If condition this condition is true, then output will become this. Okay. Here yeah, the nesting of condition operator is possible. This is possible. Here you can see this condition is false. Then execute this. 10 is condition is true then execute condition is this one is condition is true then 40 will come okay then 40 output will become 40 perfect here you can see 10 
less ten is greater than twenty. Not condition is false. Means thirty will. Condition is false. Na condition is false. Then execute this. Like after that column here, in this first we take a condition 10 less than 20 and question mark, take 130 colon and one more take a condition 100 great less than 20 and take a question mark and 40 colon 50 like that. That if this condition is true, if this condition is true, it's good to go. 30 will. But if your condition is false, then go there. After that column, after that column, this will execute. If condition is false, then execute this. You can check. 100 less than 20? No. Condition is false. Then the 40 will output. Not 40. Why not 40? 50 output is 40 is coming. I don't know what happening. That's for my understanding. Okay, this condition is false now. Guru. This condition is false. Yes, 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 yes. I forget it. Right, right. This condition is false. Then false means 50. Output will be 50. So This is type casting error. I can see that example for this. What is that? Uh, conditional operator. What is that? Yes, out. Uh, sys out check. Uh, what is that? We check one condition 10 less than 20. Perfect. And question mark take inside that block. Now this block outside of this block question mark 30 colon and the foot 40. What is that output? I will show you. This out and uh, uh, ten will uh, greater than five. Question mark uh, forty colon thirty fifty. Perfect. Okay. So now let's see what is that output here. We can see. You can see first in the first case. In the first case, we get a 30. Means, if the condition, this one is true, then output will become this. If this condition is false, no. This one is condition is true, then this will become right. If this condition is true, this will become 40, 40. Now, I want to force this condition. Just intentionally, I am trying to force this condition. Okay. What is that? Uh, 10 greater than 20. Right? Question mark like 100 colon 400. Right? Now output will become 400. Right? 400 we, we will get. So this is the conditional operator. Here you can. This one is examples are there. So now new operators we have. That is the new operators. We can use new operator to create the object in Java. Okay, there is a no delete operators in Java because destruction is less. Object is responsible to the garbage collector. We are not responsible to. Uh, we are not responsible to. Not responsible to delete that uh, object in Java. This is the operator. We can use this operator to declare under construct create array. 
Java operator precedence. This is the which, which precedence to act, follow that. Okay. Unary operators. First is that square bracket. Okay, then uh, plus plus post increment, post decrement, pre increment, pre decrement, tilde symbol, not new, then type. But arithmetic is first you can multiply, then divide, percentile, then plus, and then minus. What is that? In that uh, multiplication, what is the star multiplication, then divide, then percentile, then plus, then minus. At the end of minus, we perform in that uh, precedence. But in the unary operators, first precedence is square bracket. First, it will solve the brackets, if any brackets are there. Then post decrement, post increment and decrements. Follow. Shift operators, these are the left shift, right shift operators. And comparison operators are there, equality operators performing for double equality, bitwise operators first is and short circuit and conditional this, assigned operator this. So now, evaluation order of Java operator operands. Operands is nothing but this A and B. A plus B. A is the operand. Okay. So now, operators demo main Java. Okay. Print island M of 1, M of M of 2, M of 3. Multiply like that. But in the arithmetic, first it will happen. Arithmetic. Call this method. If you call this method, then the method will come. I. What is that? One. 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 Return the one. One will become one. Then here it's two. Multiply with the three. Divided by four. Multiply with the five and plus six. What is that? First we multiply that. After that, we can divide, right? This will happen. You can see the analyze also here. There. First, we this will happen. This I have written to. First, it will multiply this. 2 and 6. 1 plus 2 and 6 divided by 4 multiply 5 plus 6. Then 1 plus 6 multiply 4 into 5. 4, 5, z 20 plus 6. <laughs> then is not a 20 yet the second precedence is in that um, divide multiply after that you can divide this when you try to divide 6 4 will come 4 will come 4 and 4 4 means 1 1 multiply 5 then multiply that 5 then multiply with 5, then 5, multiply with 1. Sorry, the output is 12. So, this is the new and new. So, simple you can know. You, you are uh, aware about new operator in Java. New operator in Java using create the object. In the operator to create the object, if no class name at the beginning then then we can create an object by passing new operators okay new instance is the method presenting class is class which can be used to create object also okay if we don't know the class name at the beginning and it's available dynamically dynamically run time then we should go for new instance new instance method like that like object o equals to class dot for name ax dot new instance method then it will create the new instance of class to get name what is that class name to get object to get if dynamically provide class is not 
available then we will get then we will get runtime exception saying class not found exception what is that class not found exception to use new instance method compulsory corresponding class should contain the no argument constructor otherwise we will get runtime exception saying instance exceptions so this is some differences you can learn okay new new is first differences new is operator which can we use to create the object new instance is the method present in class which can be used to create object okay we can use new operator known the class name at the beginning we can use the new instance method if we don't know don't know if we don't know class name at beginning and available dynamically runtime then use this new instance okay if corresponding dot class file not available at runtime okay get runtime exception saying no class they found error it's unchecked okay but here you can get class not found exception okay at checked it to what is that to use new operator corresponding class corresponding class not required constructors okay but new used to new instance method be corresponding uh, class should compulsory contain no argument constructor otherwise we otherwise will get on the answer the difference between class not found exception right now this is not important you can see both are uh, class def found error and class not found exception at the runtime, if you, that class is not available, then you can say that class not found the exception. If we, at that time of uh, compilation, you think this error, then the found error will get. Okay. The difference between instance of and is instance. Instance of the operator, which can be used to check whether that given object is particular type or not. What is that uh, instance of operator is used to check that particular object is related to this or not. Okay, but in instance is method present in class, we can use to uh, method to check whether that given object is particular type or not. Particular type or not. Dynamically runtime. Is instance is method present in class, we can use instance method to check whether the given object is particular type or not. We can't know, we don't know at the time, at the beginning it's available. Dynamically at runtime, like this. See, this is the example. So now, thank you. So we completed operators. I will take our revision sessions also for this and that revision sessions. We completed operators. So thank you. Thank you for watching. We will meet in the next session.